Hello, welcome back. Lovely to see you all again. So in this video, we're trying to convert the amino guanidine bicarbonate that we've made into uh, five amino tetrazole. Um, this is our brand new amino guanidine bicarbonate. Um, there's 12 and a half grams there. I only made about 15 grams, which was a very low yield based on um, the amount of stuff I started with. I can't remember exactly how much it was, but it was a considerable amount. I still got heaps of cyanamide there and oh, a little bit of hydrazine sulfate. But I just really haven't got the hang of that previous reaction. Um, as you can see, the product is a little brown. I ran an NMR of it and we've got the strong... Um, you know, it, there's only one carbon in aminoguanidine bicarbonate. Um, so I added it to some acid um, and then ran the NMR. We see that peak, a very strong carbon peak, but we do have an extra peak, extra stray peak. So I think it's some, I don't quite know what it is, but I think it's hopefully just some oxidation product that won't uh, interfere with this sort of stuff. We can see that product, I'm fairly sure, when we heat this strongly, um, the aminoguanidine bicarbonate um, evaporates off, but we're left with this, this yellow kind of crud um, it's, it's a small amount of it, but that's probably whatever this is, is giving us our, our peak. For this particular run of the synthesis, we're going to follow the Engager um, over-the-counter tetrazoles right up. We're going to follow that, that instructions like as exact as we possibly can. Usually I'll run my own sort of variations on things, but we're going to try and run exactly, exactly. It's scaled down a little bit because I'm only using 12.5 grams of minogranadine bicarbonate. But um, we have here... Uh, roughly 80 mils of 15% nitric acid, which is probably a waste of nitric acid, seeing as probably any other acid would work, but we're going to follow it exactly, because I have actually a bit of nitric acid, a bit of azeotropic nitric acid now, somehow. So to get from this product, this amino granulin bicarbonate, all the way to 5 amino tretrazole, we only need a couple of steps, and that's, um, we're going to neutralize it and turn it into the soluble amino granadine nitrate, and then we're going to do the diazonation, um, and then it's just a reflux over sodium bicarbonate. Um, and that should then form the tetrazole ring. Yeah, all right, early signs aren't great. Uh, that's meant to be a nice clear solution. It's obviously filled with a um, something or other. So we're just gonna filter that out because everything we actually want should be dissolved. Um, so we'll filter out this shit. It's probably just calcium um, sulfate or something like that, yeah. All right, now we've got all that muck filtered out of there, we can go ahead and add our sodium nitrite solution. It's just dissolving in the required amount of water there. Uh, we're gonna have high stirring on here. We don't actually really need any cooling for this. Um, we'll add it slow enough, but some diazonations are really sensitive and you really need to like, you know, ice bath them, ice bath them. But this one apparently just can run at 20 degrees or so, which is, uh, you know, just above room temperature. So if we keep the addition small enough, as long as we don't see any brown gases coming off, we'll, um, don't even need to bother about um, maintaining and checking the temperature. should be all right. All right, so I've added all the bicarb, and um, I had it on the ice bath because when I was adding the bicarb and it was foaming because of the carbon dioxide coming off, I started getting a real nitrogen dioxide kind of smell off it, and I was worried I was kind of breaking down the di diazonation sort of intermediate. So I cooled it down the ice bath while I added the rest of the bicarb. But um, now we have it, and we it's full of a, a precipitate here. And I don't want to get too optimistic, but this looks exactly like I'd expect the tetrazole to look. Crystalline sort of stuff. You know, there's some excess bicarb down the bottom, but that's what it looks like. Surely not. Nah, I must have just crystallized something else out. It's uh, giving off a lot of gas, even though it's not, it's not boiling yet. It's just... 
you know, I, I feel like this is a bad sign because I don't know why it would be giving off gas at this point, assuming it's all it's all neutralized. So that gas can only really be nitrogen and that's our product decomposing. You know, it just seems like it's all just, just bubbling away and, 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 you know, fucking off into the atmosphere. My hard end stuff. So it's been refluxing for two hours now and I've just turned heat off so it's just uh, stopped refluxing for the moment. Uh, I know I said we'd follow the publication, you know, exactly and the publication says that uh, we should reflux it for four hours, but it's 2 a.m. So if I reflux it for four hours, that puts me to, you know, 4 a.m. And obviously not going to be awake then. What we need to do is we need to set the pH to be about four. We've got to check the pH and see what we need to do. I'm fairly sure, seeing as the amount of bicarbonate I added, that we're going to have to add some acid. And we're just going to add 50 cent sulfuric acid because the paper we're following says 30 cent sulfuric acid. And I think 50 cent is close enough for 2 a.m. <laughs> Oh, Jesus Christ, I dropped the fucking litmus paper in the universal indicator paper in there and none of my tweezers fit in the clamps enough to get the fucking bit of paper out. I'm so done with this. This is why I shouldn't do synthesis at fucking 2am. Okay, we can tell from that bit of submerged litmus paper that it is basic and we need to add some 50 cent sulfuric acid. That's so annoying. Alright, I'm just going to have to leave it in there. I can't get it out. Cat, what are you doing up? It's fucking bedtime, alright? What are you doing? Go to bed. Not even allowed in here. Go, go. Yeah, we can see it bubbling and it's shifted colour slightly. This is we've gone just to pH. That was that last drop there on the far left. So I think we're entering the right pH range. It's about pH 4, so um, that's where we want it. So we're going to let it cool down because it's still very, very hot. And we'll come back in the morning after I've actually some had some uh, much needed sleep <laughs> um, and uh, hopefully we have some uh, tetrazole coming out of solution you know after all this all right here we are the next day and it doesn't look like there's anything really in the flask except for that fucking bit of ph paper these solutions tend to form super saturated solutions really easily you know the hope is that we can just trigger it to crystallize out i mean there's definitely something in there there's some crystals in there actually now that i really look at it so that might be what we want, but um, I'll chuck this in the in the fridge to cool down as much as possible. All right, I didn't even get to cooling it down. I'm at labs there and fridges, you know, in the building. But halfway there, as I looked down, and it was full of crystals. So um, I was right about the super saturation. I was really hoping to get it on camera. You know, it would be a really nice shot to have something with no crystals and then I, you know, shake it and then it's all of a sudden, oh, it's our product. And <laughs> I tried, I tried with the previous shot. I really did. I, sh I It looked really like a thick solution. So I, I thought it was, you know, super saturated. So I was shaking it, but nothing happened. As soon as I turn the camera off and walk it over there. But you know, I, I can't be too mad because it's definitely, you know, it's definitely work. I mean, it's, it's yet to be seen that it's actually a product, but it's, it's hard to believe that um, an inorganic salt that could be in there like sodium nitrate or sodium sulfate can do what that does because they just don't tend to form super saturated solutions of this magnitude. So I'm still gonna chug it in the fridge for a few hours, you know, there's still more to come out of solution, but um, there's definitely product there. So, so pleased, very pleased, very pleased. Right, and there's our product. Uh, it's still pretty wet, but we're gonna recrease it from hot water anyway, so I don't, worry too much about water. Hopefully the recrystal will get some of the yellow out because it's very very yellow. Right, it's all dissolved except for that fucking bit of pH paper which I completely forgot about until everything else dissolved and I was like, oh shit. I tried to get it out once again but I bloody ripped it in two or three. Now there's 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 multiple bits of paper in there but um that's yeah that's that's shit but apart from that <laughs> All right, when we last left, I was recrystalling uh, uh, impure tetrazole from hot water. And now it, that all dissolved and um, I thought I used far too much water and it all dissolved and there was no crystals. I just put it in my bedroom, 
just like, you know, where I could see it, just in case I, you know, I wanted to see it crystallizing out. And I was fairly busy, so I think about three weeks passed, and I was just looking at it all the time. You know, I'll pick it up, look at it, no, there's no crystals. I was really disappointed. I thought, oh, I've put all this effort into making this video, and I just, you know, stuffed up the red crisp. A couple of days ago, I, I finally had some time, so I thought, oh, what I'll do is I'll just boil off some water. So I went, I poured the solution into another small beaker, and then I was like, looking at it, I was like, oh, I must be seeing things. It looks like there's crystals in here. I must not have seen that before. Then all of a sudden, it started, crystals started forming in there. I quickly managed to set up my camera and film it um, <laughs> real quickly, and you can see all the crystals coming out. And then I thought, oh, well, maybe it's crystallizing out in the, uh, the big beaker too. So I went back there and I looked at it, and it, it was also too starting to just crystallize out. So it was that action of like picking it up and carrying it around after three weeks suddenly triggered it to crystallize. But I can't really complain too much. There's lots of crystals in here. They're still very, very yellow, uh, which is very concerning. There's a bit of ice in there because I put it in the freezer, but there's too much water in there and it's just gonna freeze. So uh, we're gonna vacuum filter these crystals out. Maybe we can try and remove some yellow. Hopefully all the yellow goes with the solution left with the white crystals, but um, maybe that won't happen. All right, so what I did is I just um, ran the stuff through the filter, washed it with a little bit of ice cold water and then a bit of ice cold ethanol, then I dried thoroughly on the pump. And we're left with here our yield, this is 1.7 grams, which is a very, very low theoretical yield. So low that it would damage my confidence to actually calculate it, so I haven't calculated it. Um, most of the loss, I think, was in the re because I just did that really poorly, um, just because I was a bit rushed. I know what you're ready to say. You'll be saying something in the comments along the lines of, Tom, you're a fucking moron. You're trying to make a white powder, and this is yellow. It's clearly not the correct product. Well, that was what I was thinking. I was like, it's so yellow, how could it possibly be 5-amino tetrazole, despite the fact that we've seen the, the super saturation. So I took some of this, and I ran NMR, because I, uh, up until last week, had access to an NMR. And, well, the NMR is flawless. It's perfect, that peak is exactly that carbon peak. We only want one carbon peak because there's only one carbon in the tetrazole ring. And that is exactly where we want it to be compared to the spectrum in the electrochemistry. So why is it yellow? I don't know. I don't. I generally don't know what compound in there is, could be in there that, that makes it yellow because it's not organic because otherwise it would show up in the NMR if it's in reasonable concentrations. If it was really, really dilute, it might have faded away into the background, but I doubt it. But then that leaves it has to be something inorganic, really. But then what's yellow that could be in that thing? Yeah, so in the end, I don't think it's actually such a significant thing for our product. I mean, the crystals are good. I looked at them under the microscope. And so the product is really nicely crystalline, gives us a perfect NMR. So I don't think we have to worry too much about the color. So we've done NMR, but let's do the real technique setting some stuff on fire. So what we should see if it's tetrazole should hopefully melt first and then maybe do something energetic afterwards. And if it does burn off, um, we'd expect that there to be some residue left over, some carbon, because there's that one carbon in the ring um, and there's nothing to oxidize it. There's no oxygen around. I've been trying this reaction for a while now. I think this is probably the sixth time I've run it. And a lot, most of the time it fails. And I, it, it's always eluded me why it's not working. And I think I've worked it out why. It's because of the color of the product, I've been ditching out. I've been filtering it out and throwing it away. I think because some calcium sulfate makes it through um, in the amino guanidine bicarbonate, um, that ends up there. And then when I don't calculate the right amount of bicarb to be used, that, you know, excess bicarb comes in there and that kind of masks the supersaturation effect. And I sort of filter it out at the wrong times. Um, and I actually managed to, somewhere in the back of the cupboard, I managed to find <laughs> from the reaction, tetrazole failure, unknown crap. And I reckon that is mostly tetrazole. I filtered off the yellow stuff that first precipitated out that I got a bit excited over. Um, but as far as I can tell, this is a very water soluble salt, so I'm going to assume it's, uh, I don't know what the yellow is from once again, but mainly sodium chloride or sodium nitrate. But I have a feeling there's a lot of unreacted bicarbon also, um, calcium sulfate in there just from the poor amino granity bicarbonate and poor calculations, 
that would be masking the energetic effects. Um, so I was filtering out the tetrazole and then trying to continue the reaction and not getting any product at the end. And so that's why I think my reaction wasn't working before. So it really wasn't a fault of the reaction as much as I would like to blame the reaction. It's really just a fault of me doing the science badly, which is unsurprising, genuinely unsurprising. So I did previously make this video kind of, but it, it ended in a failure. So this video is going to slot into the playlist and kind of, uh, it supersedes that old one. So I'm gonna put the old one on private, I guess. So just to make the playlist make sense. Um, all right, thanks very much for watching. Um, I'm very excited about having the Tetrazole ring and um, there's a lot of great chemistry that can come out of this. So thank you and I'll, I'll see you later. Look at this beautiful spectrum. Any guesses about that carbon peak? Ignore the DMSO at 39 ppm. IDK man but it looks shithouse.